Technology will never place great teachers, but technology in the hands of a great teacher can be transformational. Uh, this is a quote I'm known for, and I've been sharing it um, over the years. And I think that when we look at technology, I think a lot of times look at all the opportunities and they try to take the technology and just kind of fit it into school. We will go to a conference, we'll go to an event, we'll see a new app. And then we ask, like, how do we fit this into learning? And I think that there's opportunities that we can do things right now. You listening to this, watching this video, whatever, there, there's doors that have opened up because of the technology. But I think that we always have to focus on what is the learning that we're trying to achieve. And so when you saw like when COVID was happening, well, it's still happening, obviously. But when you see all of these things happening, a lot of people weren't like saying like, hey, we need to get on Twitter. We need to like, you know, start using video conferencing. What they saw was, hey, we have kids who are isolated and don't have access to school. How do we figure out to connect with them? So they're focused on the outcome and who they were serving. And this is why I was really um, fascinated by this conversation with Adam Juarez and Kat Goyette, because they talked about, not just about focusing on the learning, but I think the, 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 the real important aspect is focusing on who. Who are we serving, then focusing on the learning. And uh, remember this Michael Fullen quote, learning is the driver, uh, technology is the accelerator. And I wrote about this quote in the innovator's mindset. And I said, actually, it should be just changed around a little bit. And so the way I changed that, I said, no, I got to change this a little bit. It actually should be learners are the driver, technology is the accelerator. And this is why I really love this conversation is because Adam and Kat really kind of focus on who are you serving first and then think about the learning and the technology is kind of the next thing. And I think that approach, you know, whether you're working with people, we're working with adults, you're working with students is always the best thing to do is really kind of focus on who you're su serving and move backwards from there. I know you're going to love this conversation. Uh, we got in some uh, really good insights talking about how we work with IT departments, how we work with teachers and actually how, you know, educators can actually learn a ton from the work of Adam and Kat. So thanks for being here today. I hope you have a wonderful day and welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos, another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And I am so lucky to be with Adam Juarez and Kat Goyette. And we just recorded a, a shorter podcast just now, and I've known these two uh, for a long while. And there's, uh, even though they they kind of, I don't know, you kind of work together. Do you work together? Kind of like you don't work at the same job, but you work together outside of education, right? Is that or outside of? Yes. Yes. So uh, we well, we met on Twitter. That's right. Um, actually, right. so that's kind yeah. Of a and cool and thing. so so they're married. They had yes. like the the first and only Twitter wedding. I, that I know of. <laughs> That's fair to say, like in education, right? Like, did you kind of have like a so like they're married to just had a baby, yeah, and like yeah. nine weeks ago, right? And you had right. like a, a Twitter wedding. So can you just can you just kind of uh, and they actually just wrote a book by the way, and we're going to talk a little bit about it called The Complete Ed Tech Coach. And if if you are in that field, there's probably no better people than you could listen to um, than these two, and you'll you'll pick that up real quick in our podcast today, but. Can you just kind of, I, this, I don't know how to do this. I don't know. Like, I'm a little bit confused on how I'm going to do this. Like, do I want the story of how you two met? Do I want individual story? Like, how do we do this? How, how, what would work best for you two? How would that work? Uh, so I actually worked, well, we'll just, yeah. we'll just jump so into it. Um, yeah, I good. worked with, we're, we're both in education. Um, and I worked with Adam's mom uh at a at the with, without realizing it like not knowing who he was yeah. for a couple really? years we had the same position um at uh our district and so we would we would be at meetings together and such and she'd talk about like her granddaughters and stuff and i'd be like oh that's really cool you know not knowing someday um <laughs> it'd yeah. be their stepmom but anyway so then um i got a new job and she says uh, we're at an award ceremony and she says hey um that's congrats on the new job. Maybe you'll be working with my son. And I said, who's your son? And, and she said, Oh, Adam Juarez. And I said, from Cutler Rossi, you know, his, his district, she says, yes. And I knew of him because of right. Twitter chats we were on. And I was like, man, that guy's good. He, his students are doing great stuff. So, um, when I got my job and I just reached out to all the tech coaches in the area, 
um, and uh, said, hey, I just want to see how uh, we can serve you here in the county office and such. And so uh, it, that's how it all started. Yeah, um, we actually worked in the same district for about two years. And I remember hearing yeah. her name, you know, at district events and stuff and hearing good stuff about her. I, I remember the name, but we never met uh, until she sent that, that fateful email one day when she first started her job at the county office. So I, I, I reply, I go, yeah, you know, I, I was on summer break. I was actually doing nothing. So, yeah, I, I can meet, you know, we, we, we can uh, we, we, we can talk shop. So we did. And what should have been a three a 30 minute meeting ended up being three hours. Wow. And uh, and it was that day Tech Rodeo was born. Our, yeah, our, yeah, our, yeah. our, oh, our cool. Twitter chat, CV Tech Talk was born um, on that day. And we just started collaborating on stuff uh, for the rest of that summer. And, you know, then uh, it kind of started. Um, she she messaged me on a, on a Sunday. She said, hey, I saw that you're on the speakers list for this this uh, event in Sacramento. I'm like, I am. I, I, I never they never emailed me <laughs> saying that I was accepted. I go, I didn't know. She's like, yeah, why don't you uh, hear, uh, why don't you tweet at the guy in charge and they'll hook you up. I go, oh, all right. So I found <laughs> out that I'm going to this conference. I'm speaking. It was actually the, one of the first uh, times I ever spoke uh, at a conference and then not just attending. And so we're getting close up to the, to the day to go. And we, uh, we're, we're talking about. Baby hey, time. Oh, Baby yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Uh, it's getting about that time, but yeah, so we're, we're, couple days before she's like hey um what time you leave in the morning i go i'm going the night before i'm not making that trip to sacramento i'm not leaving at 4 a.m i'm not doing that just so you know i'm that type like yeah, i'll get is. up 2 a.m prepare get, finish this getting ready for the session drive down to southern california drive. yeah it's oh wow morning. yeah she's she, a, she's a little, not as much as i used to be but <laughs> yeah I, I can't do that so <laughs> yeah but, so like but both of you like you're so did you you started tech rodeo together I actually well, had the opportunity to speak at Tech Rodeo. Yes, was, that, I, was that the first keynote there? Or is yes, there, yes. That was the first keynote ever there. And yeah. you are, of course, mentioned in our book because I talk about how, um, you know, George was, uh, for those of you listening, George was like my edu hero. Um, loved the what book. Do mean, what do you mean was? Like, I'm, I'm out? Still, I'm I'm out? out. <laughs> oh, man. I'm out uh -oh. now. I get it. <laughs> so um so yeah i uh and i so i i think gosh wouldn't it be i'm thinking like this would be a dream to have george come to our first you know inaugural tech rodeo and, and so i just direct messaged you on twitter yeah. thinking like okay you know he's got like you know hundreds of thousands of followers or whatever and i have like i don't know i don't think i even had a thousand yet yeah i don't think i was even close to that i had like a couple hundred maybe and um and 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 he messages me back, George. You messaged me back, and yeah, I, remember. I was so excited. It was like half an hour later, too. Yeah. And so quite, I was so excited. Oh, yeah. I ran over to Adam because we were at that conference that, yeah. that he's talking about in Sacramento. I was like, look, look, look! I was so excited. I didn't know so, that part. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That 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 conference trip was was pretty epic because you know we, there was that whole uh, response from you, and I mean oh, we we end, up car, we, we end up carpooling. And, and on the way, um, so we, we carpooled home, and we ended up picking up, giving a ride home to John Carippo, another mentor of ours. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot, that conversation on the way home spurred my innovator project for, with Google, and so many other ideas we had that we've a lot of things that are now in our book just came from that. So that that that, that was an epic. Uh, That's epic so cool. Trip. <laughs> and now and now I'm no because you got to know me. You're like, nah, he's not my hero anymore. No, that's not true. Hey, Stop. you collaborated with Katie Novak, so yeah. that's a that's a hero thing right there too. Oh, do you not know? Katie, do you not? Do you not know? Katie? You know Katie, I'm assuming, no, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Katie, Katie's like my my little sister who annoys me. She's awesome. Sorry, but yeah. she's also annoys me. And she knows it's not. I tell her that too all the time. But her and I are pretty tight. So uh, she's she's all like she's my biggest fan. I love her. She's uh she's she's awesome. Um, I I actually the reason I brought up Tech Rodeo is not to kind of plug my own keynoting, but uh, I actually <laughs> distinctly remember it. First of all, I talked about this in other podcasts. I remember like what is going on here? There's a bunch of cows like literally outside, right? So I was like, oh, this is in California, so that's was not what I was used to growing up in small town Canada. You expect you know you know california from the videos and right. then but then i you know I, I distinctly remember just um really unbelievably welcoming people like you like obviously you and adam were very welcoming but just the participants mm -hmm. and it's something like like i do get to travel lots and it's something that i, I get asked all the time 
um, like what's your favorite place to go? And it's never a place. It's always about the people, right? That's always what connects me is that how did I feel when I was connecting with people there? And it, it was like, I, I, and it's something, and also like, and also I will, I remember you were wearing like a cowboy hat, cowboy, like jeans, all that stuff. And I was like, and I was wearing a suit and I was like, I, I dressed wrong. But I, then I like said, I don't have the stuff. Like I got to carry on. So I, don't, I can't just pick out <laughs> costumes for when I go on the road. It was awesome. So t- can you, can you just kind of like, I know tech road has been going on for a little while. Um, mm-hmm. Can you just tell a little bit about kind of like how that started? And like, I know you kind of mentioned that a little bit, but like yeah. how it's evolved over time. Sure. So um, it's a great question. So it started as um, I start this job at the county and my supervisor says, hey, we want to have a uh, an event, um, an ed tech event mm-hmm. for um, our region. And uh, so I, you know, I think, well, what's the, the first thing I need to do is really get like administrators involved because they don't know me yet. They don't know. Like we're really trying to build uh, this department. We want to really uh, invigorate uh, educators, but we have to get to them. So we got to uh, go for the admin first. And so we had a whole admin administrator strand. We started a, a tech leads, um, a tech connect, I think we called it, where I, I brought in tech leads from the county and they could come and we read your book um, so that we could, you know, uh, start to have like kind of a common vision and and uh, a common understanding what what's good solid pedagogy with ed tech and such. And so that was the first year. And every year since then, we wanted to make sure and innovate. We wanted something that was a little mm-hmm. different. We wanted to make sure that we stayed, like there's a surprise. Um, there's always a presenter gift, right? Um, mm-hmm. if you got the belt buckle, right? With the little right. tech rodeo I logo. Have, I do have, actually, I think I have it in my office to be honest. Oh, cool. Yeah. So Adam and I always kind of uh, talk about what's what's it going to be this year? What's going to be new? So the second year we had um, uh, John Spencer and AJ Giuliani. So we had a, yep. a, a joint keynote, which was great. And that year we actually had um, we had students presenting. Yeah. So that was new. My daughters. That's right. So that was cool. Um, we also uh, the third year. Or was it the fourth year? I forget now. Uh, we had students create an app that yes. could be used for Tech Audio. So it had oh, the schedule cool. and cool. all sorts of things. Right. Um, and so we always want to innovate and iterate and have something new uh, each time. So this uh, year um, is virtual, but we're going to have some fireside or fire uh, mm-hmm. fire ed chats. Yes. So you're going to have the opportunity to come and network and just have conversations yeah. like around the camp, the virtual campfire. Um, with people about different topics and with, you know, they'll be like uh, a, an expert author or whatever that, that's, you know, well-versed in whatever topic it happens to be. So there's always something new. And I think that the biggest part, though, is it was always based on feedback. Yeah. Um, right. And so we really liked this. And, you know, so it, with the idea would spark, uh, be sparked from those, that feedback. And believe it or not, it's always when the event's over on the way home, we're coming up with the idea right. for next year. Like True. immediately, we start we start uh, ideating. It's 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 kind of funny. Yeah, and that, I think that's a really important point when you talk about the notion of feedback because a lot of times we take feedback but we don't do anything with it. But you're always like iterating, creating something new. It's one of the reasons I actually suggest like teachers ask for feedback from students during the year, not at the end of the year, because if you don't actually do anything for the current students, uh, it's kind of a lost opportunity. Uh, the one thing that I really appreciate and I think is really an important aspect is the idea of getting administrators involved first. And it's not because they're the most important, but honestly, they often control the finances. And this is something I, 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 I'm really adamant about. I don't want to disappoint my boss, right? And so if, if they, if someone goes to your conference, and they're all excited about trying something new and they're like wow i want to get into this and their admin who doesn't know any of this stuff starts like crapping on it right away they're going to walk away from it you know there's going to be the very few that will say oh i'm going to continue on i'm you know i'm going to ask for forgiveness instead of permission that those kind of people i'm not i as much as i'm known for being innovative in my practice uh I don't like asking for, I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, it's, it's not my personality. I've like, I'm a cry in the principal office guy. I always have been. And so I love that approach because I think a lot of times 
Um, cause, cause some people think that it's about serving the admin first and it's actually about serving the teachers to make sure you kind of clear the path for them to be successful. Yeah. Right. And is that, that's kind of like, that's kind of why you did that. And if, like, from what I'm hearing, yeah. that's kind of why you did that. Right. And yeah, so, it really was. Yeah. And I, and I love that. So here I'm going to just kind of like, and I told, I told both of you, I'm going to kind of go wherever this conversation leads. I, I'm kind of thinking somebody's listening to this and especially, I think there's more opportunities now with virtual events somebody wants to start a conference for the very first time okay what what piece of advice would you give them to start like if they're like want to put something together they want to do something for the district like what would be like hey do this one or these one or two things before anything like is there is there a place because i know you've had it very successful over the years and so like what would you be give them for advice on that process i was going to say something about kind of what we're kind of what we uh we talk about in our book, you know, mm -hmm. we, the, the, you know, we've heard admin forever talk about start with the why we, we say start, mm -hmm. start, start with, start with the who. And right. so who are you serving or what are their needs? And once you, once you kind of answer those questions, then you can kind of uh, begin to develop your why. So right. before you're, you're even going to, if your why is going to be your conference, you know, who are you serving? What are their unique needs? And then you, you then you're able to go from there. I was going to say the exact same thing, actually. I was going to talk about um, knowing your people yeah. because it needs to be built organically. Um, there are plenty of, and that's actually what Tech Rodeo was because uh, I could have very easily brought in an organization to do the event for us, right? right. Like, oh, I'm right. going to bring in, a, you know, a, there are various PD organizations all over the place yeah. that would have done yeah. this. But that's, not who we are. They don't know us. And so uh, finding out who, that's why it was important that we brought together tech leaders and said, what will help your school move forward? What kind of sessions, what kind of people should we bring in, et cetera. And so starting with that, who is important. And we really try to uh, to highlight local presenters. We, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not hard for us to reach out and get outsiders, but we wanted to to really right. uh, lift up and raise up the uh, the people here in our region. It's actually like, as I'm listening to you, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things I'm kind of remembering from that process, and I, I said this earlier, how welcoming and friendly people were. And it's probably because they felt like, hey, we're like being listened to, we're at an event, we're at serving our needs. It's, you know, it's kind of about us. Like then you probably would be, <laughs> you'd probably be happier through that process. And I think even too, I remember, um, cause I actually helped you book Adam, or sorry, uh, AJ and John. I remember yes. that. And I remember, yeah. and I, and I remember distinctly because you were kind of looking on building on the momentum and it wasn't just about, it was like, they're, they're great. And I'm not saying they're not at all, but it was really about like kind of what they talked about and what served the people that you were working with and what people felt like they needed. And I think that was really kind of what, like I was, as I'm listening to you, um, I think that, that really kind of resonated with me and it like, yeah, of course people are gonna be happy when they feel their needs are met. Because I think a lot of times when we um, do events, there's kind of like, uh, here's what I, here's what I think people need. And it's like, well, did you ask the people, right? Did you even have a conversation with them? Maybe you should, you know, talk to them about that. So I, I love that. And so I want to get into um, a little bit about your book, the complete ed tech coach. And you can actually, anyone listening right now, it will be in the description, whether you're watching on YouTube, uh, or listening at various places. So tell just kind of what's like a quick synopsis uh, of, of, of this book. Well, I think the, the, this was the book that we wrote uh, that we wish we would have had when we yeah. first started our job because there, there was, it's such a new, new position that there was no wise old man that we, that you could elicit advice from. Right. So it, it ended up being a collection of stories of our successes and failures um, it's not going to read like a textbook. It's not a how-to manual. And right. we, we quote Jimmy Casas in there because uh, one thing he said that resonated with us when we, we got to meet him a few times, uh, he said that, you know, there, there's a, I don't have any answers, but I, I have stories and experiences. Yeah, he'll, he'll always talk about, you know, there's mm -hmm. things that that you're not taught at principal school. Well, for, right. There's no school for ed tech coaches either. And it's, uh, I think we're, we're trying to be in that same vein. Yeah, so we we talk about an organic approach, uh, mm -hmm. and so it's very it, it it 
talks about what we've done um, and stories, uh, but also with that organic approach, meaning our people are first, um, our processes are going to come from that. We give a lot of ideas on what that looks like, but we really have a lot of uh, the book is about kind of that boots on the ground, walk around your habitat, know who your people are, know what it is that they need. If I go in, I, I remember as a teacher, if I had a principal that hardly ever came in my room and all of a sudden they're evaluating me, I'm not going to listen to them. But if there's someone that can't, comes in quite often, talks to me, asks me how I'm, you know, asks me, what are you trying that's new? How can I support you? It's going to be a lot more effective and they're going to be able, they'll, they'll know what to suggest for me. So similarly, that's our take on coaching uh, is that it's something that really is um, built on that organic approach where we're on the ground with teachers. And, you know, it, it says a complete ed tech coach, but there, there's something for everybody, no matter what your role is um, in education, whether you're a classroom teacher, you're a lead, you're a coach, um, you're, you're an administrator. Um, and kind of two quotes that kind of encapsulate the spirit of the book. The first one is, um, you know, lead with learning, never with tech. So mm-hmm. your, your technology is going to come after you've identified what your learning goal is. Right. And, and th- then you see where, where the tech fits in. It's not... I'm going to use this tool and then we'll see how that fits in. That's putting a, a square peg in a round hole. Uh, the other one we say um, is uh, if you plan with the four C's in mind, the tech will take care of itself. And right. we, we think that really encapsulates what, what the organic approach is because the tech is coming in. Where it's going to get in where, where it fits in. Yeah. And I appreciate that you share because it's, it, I don't think this is a book that's just for people in ed tech. And uh, I think it would help, you know, teachers administrators kind of looking at this process and i think that to me especially when you're saying like it's organic you're not doing a step by step if you are actually writing a book on ed tech and you're providing a step by step i already know you don't know what you're doing right because it is like it is an evolving process like when we came on here today you know my tech didn't work something was going wrong i have like my backup camera ready to go things like that too and it, it is like every day that you're using technology, you're having to kind of put yourself through this learning process. But I think a lot of times we just want the step by step with everything, right? We just want kind of the, the like, you know, planned out. And I think that that evolution is really important. So here's something I'm going to I pulled up actually an old article I wrote. I'm going to I'm curious. I'm going to ask you about these questions I asked now because here's here's a reason I um, and I, I just want to know what you think of them, because. When you work in educational technology, you're even though, and this is something I always say, is that a lot of times you're not trained for this, but a lot of times you spend your time fixing crap. Like, let's be honest. It's not just the learning stuff. It's you. And like, there's, there's some value to this too. Um, but it isn't what you're supposed to do, right? It is like, you're supposed to focus on learning. Um, and so you are dealing with it departments. And I think a lot of times people in this space, one of the frustrations is their it department right? And uh, there's a terminology called um, FUD. It's actually called fear. And, and actually, once I share this to you, don't just limit this to, to IT. This actually happens a lot in the world. Uh, FUD is actually stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So for example, if you ask your IT department, like, hey, we want to try this thing. Oh, that's like a safety issue. And a lot of people are like, well, if it's a safety issue, then I'm not doing it. And they just like, they just live that, right? But I actually, you know, when I started working, I'd be like, well, tell me how it's a safety issue. And then they were kind of thrown off, right? Like, like you need to, di- like, I need you to explain this to me because I actually understand this stuff, right? And sometimes, like, I think more and more people have, I wouldn't say an IT background, but are comfortable with technology who understand learning, where I think years ago, we had a bunch of people really good with technology that, you know, did the frameworks and made decisions for teachers and said, here's what you get, right? So, um, in your work with IT departments and kind of going through that and kind of be like, have you ever felt like a, um, almost like a liaison, maybe like maybe it's the wrong term. And by the way, IT department people have the hardest job. I, they're not, maybe not the hardest job. They have the most ungrateful job. Nobody ever calls the IT department at the end of the day and says, Hey, the internet worked all day. Thanks. Nobody's <laughs> ever true. done that well. Right. So they never get kudos that they deserve. You know, they only hear when crap goes wrong. So did you, did you ever feel like you were like a mediator between staff and IT? Always, always. Yeah, I actually, 
uh, tell a story in the book of how uh, a friend of ours, um, Eric Kwong, uh, yeah. he is the IT um, director, so to speak, at a district I work with, and we will walk classrooms together. And we both learn so much from each other. Mm. Uh, I have learned why and how uh, certain, uh, you know, certain tech uh, logistics are possible or not, or what might be a better hardware for something or whatever. And then he learns, oh, this is what the teachers actually need to do. Now I know what to research to make sure it works with our infrastructure, et cetera. Right. Uh, and it has been an amazing learning experience. Uh, he's not a trained teacher. He's trained in IT. I'm not yeah. trained in IT, but I need to know what's possible. And when I have administrators from other schools, for example, saying, oh, well, we, my IT person told me we can't do that. Oh, okay, well, let me uh, let me call someone and, and right. uh, right. have the verbiage for you to talk to them because maybe they just don't know or... Yeah, or have the fud. They have the fud. I should right. say. Right, and the and the fud. Like when you when they do this, they'll say, "Oh, like I remember saying to IT person, I gotta tell you the story. I may be outing a district right now um, about this Wi-Fi. And uh, one time I was well. First, a little preamble. There's um, when when you're saying things like, "Oh, that doesn't fit with our infrastructure." One of the things I would say to my IT department, and like the last person I worked with out of my school district was amazing. He like I like. You know, hey, this doesn't work in our infrastructure, so we're gonna have to change our infrastructure because we need to figure out how to make it work. <laughs> like that's how he was. Like it wasn't me; it was him, right? Wow. I learned a lot that's from great. that process, right? And I think that's powerful. But I think one time, um, I remember actually going to a school district, and I'm curious if you've ever had an experience like this. So I'm speaking at the school district, and I said, "Hey, like uh, I would really want the teachers like sharing, you know, tweeting, so I can see what they're thinking while I'm speaking." And they're like, "Oh, the, well, the teachers don't have." access to the wi-fi in the school i'm like what do you mean they don't have access to wi-fi I'm like well we don't give that out to teachers right i'm like what i'm like i'm like maybe you should have researched me before you brought me here right <laughs> like i'm not i might be trouble today right so i said well hey i really need it for the day can we just like give teachers the password yeah. and so they have access i need access because of the stuff i'm doing so if you don't have if you don't allow me internet access this is gonna be a really tough day right so they gave it to me reluctantly right the it department and then, uh, so they gave me the password. I said, hey, I'm just gonna throw the password up on the screen so everyone could just see it and they get access to it. And I, I, I know, I think I could tell you know where it was going. They said, no, 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 don't do that. They went to every teacher in the room, grabbed their device and logged on for them because they were like, there's no wow. way we're telling these people the password. And wow. I was like, Really? I'm like, you are, you are basically phasing yourself out of a job because people are going to say, I'm not using this because it's too much hassle. And then if they don't use it, then what are you doing? If they don't use it, then they're like, we don't need this technology. Is that like, is that, is that like a shocking story that I just shared? No, sadly, no, no, it's not. Right. Yeah. So that, that to me, like, it's, I think kind of going back to what you're saying earlier, it's like, who are you serving? Right? Like, if you want teachers to use this, and I think a lot of times they, there are so many barriers to things that your high flying teachers that are comfortable with technology, they're willing to jump over the barriers, but the 95% that aren't willing to do that, whereas you got to take away every barrier for them so that it's easy, right? So that you don't have to think about it. So here, here's an article I wrote, and I'm curious. Um, so I asked, I say these four guide, guiding questions for your IT department. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to share each one with you and I just want your thoughts. So you can say if you like the question or not, like, how do you see this? So the first question is, what is best for kids? What, what do you think of that question in relation to the IT department? They, they really don't always know. They, they, they know like this is meant to be like a back and forth, right? Like this is the conversation we're having, right? Yeah. I have used that. Um, I've, I've used that with IT departments before. Or I remember one example, and it's hard for them to dispute. A lot of right. times they don't know what's what's best for yeah. kids, like you said, Adam. And then when I have said things like, I just would hate for our kids to not have X because this is, mm -hmm. they need Y. Uh, it's difficult for them to dispute that. And so it's a great way to kind of center the conversation on what really matters. That's, that's exactly why I asked the question. I love that you said that. And so the reason, the reason why is because I didn't want to go with, I didn't want to start with what fits in our infrastructure. Right. 
So if we, if we can figure out, Hey, and it's, these are meant to be not like putting it departments on the spot. These are meant to be questions for a conversation, right? So if we say, this is what we need for kids. And then we decide, Hey, this is what's really going to help our students. Then we have to like figure out what fits in the infrastructure. So mm -hmm. that's why I asked that question. Okay. So the second thing is the second question I ask is how does this, whatever this thing is you're doing improve learning. So any thoughts on that question? So, so like if you're implementing something, how, how does it improve learning? So if I, I'm thinking of when they restrict things. So, oh, we can't have Gmail accounts for our students and we can't have G, uh, Google Calendar on. Well, how mm -hmm. does that benefit their learning? And then they're going to talk about safety, mm -hmm. but I can ask you about how does that affect their learning? So it's kind of interesting that it's focused on learning and not because to be honest, to be safe, we have to teach kids to be safe. Right. So if it's focused on learning, then shouldn't we give them some tools with some safety features? I mean, that's fine, oh, but maybe yeah. we should teach the kid to live in a digital world instead of throwing them out there when they're 18 and out of our system. I think that this speaks to the power of having an tech coach because I, I, I'm, I'm hearing these stories and these questions here and I, I feel spoiled because I, my IT department that I work with is not like that at all. Right, right. That's I, awesome. I work with them so, so long. I have such a good relationship with, with our head of IT. We play fantasy football together. We, we're, He's a Giants fan. I'm a Dodgers fan, so we're oh, always going back and forth. But I, I, I can text him at any time with anything that's you know student-related. He he knows that a lot of teachers forget. They they go right to him for, for pedagogy-based stuff. He, he just forwards me the emails. Mm -hmm. And anything that's an ID request, I forward it back right. to him. And we have a gotcha. great relationship. And he trusts me that I'm going to make the right decisions. You know, we're both, you know, super admin in our, in our Google domains and gives me pretty much carte blanche to, to push out apps and Chrome extensions and stuff like that, um, that I see fit. And um, mm. we had that great relationship. So I, I, I can't really speak to, I think some of the, uh, um, some of these, that situation. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, so there's, there's actually, so actually that question, that second question is more, of an educational technology focus or a teacher focus and here's what i mean by that so a teacher goes to some event okay they're like oh my god i saw this tech it is incredible i i want it for my class it is so good and then the and then you know the it department wants to like bend over backwards to like make that happen they get it, you know, they download all this stuff, they do this, teacher goes in the classroom, uses it one time, never uses it again. So, so we, we would have this issue. We always have this teacher's convention. People would say like, oh, can I have this? Like some vendor shared something and they were like, want it. I'm like, I need to, I need you to tell me why I need you to go into it. And part of it was that I wanted people to actually understand the viewpoint of how this would affect learning from the viewpoint of a learner. Not just like, do you, do you know what I mean? So that's why these questions are meant to be conversational. It's not just like IT department, you need to prove how this improves learning. It's like, okay, if I'm gonna spend, if I'm gonna spend time implementing this, going through all these things, cause I do have to change the infrastructure for this to make, to be happen. How is this gonna actually benefit kids? Like you need to explain that to me as a teacher. And I think that's part of the reason. Um, so the next question that I have in this is if, if we were to do X, what is the balance of risk versus reward? Right. So is there something that comes to your mind when I, when I ask that question, balance of risk versus reward? Oh, should we open up YouTube or not Yeah. for our students? You know, should, for me, it's, it's opening up, uh, you know, what, what are our filters mm -hmm. going to look like? So certainly there's going to be some risk, Yeah. but what's the reward? Well, we're empowering our learners to, be digital citizens. We're giving them the opportunity to to learn how to live in this world, uh, and we're giving them a lot of opportunities. The rewards are, I mean, unlimited learning potential, really. Um, but yeah, there's certainly risks. Yeah. There, I, I, sorry, go ahead, Adam. Sorry. Yeah, there, there's always going to be risks. I, I've hmm. you know, I've came across a few. You know, back when we used to have Google Plus, and that that, that was. Uh, Definitely something that I'm glad is gone now. We used to get some uh, some right. CD. Uh, uh, Google Plus. Yeah, we would come across <laughs> those feeds, and um, but you know what? There's always going to be some kind of risk, and if we we're trying to make this whole thing 
and it's, uh, li- these kids, uh, their learning experience to be totally antiseptic, then they're the, the, they're just not going to succeed in the, re- in the real world. And and I understand, you know, the fear mm-hmm. of risk, but yeah. you know, it just how how we're we're going to mitigate that. The, the, that's the that, that that's the conversation. And I think it all just comes down to conversation. You're talking a lot earlier about relationships, and that, that that's right. what you specialize in. And I, I think that that's applicable here too, because if you you have that relationship and conversations between your your uh, your teachers, your coaches, your admin and IT, if that's an ongoing conversation, then all these risks can can be mitigated. Yeah, and I think I think when we look at this too, when you, you brought up the example of YouTube, right? So a lot of school districts and still to this day will block things like YouTube. And the thing is, is that. I don't know if you, if you, maybe I'm dating myself, but there was like that conversation, like have your computer in like the kitchen so everyone can see it. And it's like, okay, well now I can just go take my phone in my bedroom. Like I can have access to everything. Right. Like how, like that advice just kind of goes by the wayside really quick. And so for me, one of the risks when you block these things is actually, you're just saying to kids, good luck, you figure it on your own. And what, what's happening is that it's not that we're not willing to take the risk. We're just saying sometimes in education, this is not our problem. You will just hope for the best, right? And so the other thing too, I've talked to and specifically about like YouTube access. It's like, we're always concerned about what kids will watch, what they'll see. And I understand that. And like, that's why they have like safety filters and things like this. But what a lot of people don't talk about is actually kids making YouTube videos, kids actually creating content, kids actually doing this too, right? And so I think it's, and I think, you know, I know this from the viewpoint of like, right now we're making YouTube videos going through this process. We're making podcasts that we have access to, but you know, not many schools necessarily do this with their students. And I, I'm seeing more and more, and I love it actually doing podcasts, having kids creating content. So I think, I think these are, you know, and I think it is saying like, Hey, what, what are some of these risks? What are some of the things, how do we mitigate this? But also what are we taking away? Because I think a lot of times um, we take away uh from kids and this is the last question is is this serving the few or the majority right and so when i asked that question it's that that was specifically targeted at the notion of like let's block youtube because two kids did something stupid right or like let's not have social media in school because you know four kids might do something dumb like have you have you seen that aspect where it's like hey we're gonna punish the majority for because a couple of people aren't gonna make the make good decisions that actually reminds me of all the stories that you tell in your keynote about those kids uh, tweeting. Yeah, uh, tweeting tweeting negative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that's kind of funny. Um, kind of what some of the my experience in that was, you know, there's, you know, I'm very liberal about opening up um, mm-hmm. apps like like Google Chat and Gmail. I mean, we, we have Gmail all the way down to our kindergartners. We we want them yeah. to start learning that skill. And again, when, when I when I train the teachers and students on that. You know, I, I give a warning. I go, listen, if, if you're going to abuse this, remember, you can't delete this stuff. We, we I can go right. in any time and see what your history is. And and teachers will, will message me, hey, so-and-so has been inappropriate on this. So I'm not going to shut that off for everybody. So, I've, um, you know, IT is giving me the, the ability to go create sub-organizations where I call it the probation or sub, uh, sub-OU, where they have access to everything. But maybe I'm going to kind of put them on a timeout from, from Gmail mm-hmm. and chat. But I'm not going to punish the the, the whole right. the whole herd. Um, and it's, it's definitely it's uh, I got less and less kids now in, in probation. Now it's it's good to get when I finally get them out and they they've learned that valuable lesson that there is uh, consequences uh, for right. their their digital activity. But do you know you know it's really important about what you just did, Adam. And I think this is so because it was open. You actually did stuff with kids to say like, hey, be aware of this. Whereas if you didn't open it, you wouldn't have that conversation and then they'd use it somewhere else. Right. And I think that's, that's the real important aspect of this is that when you block everything, you actually don't have conversations with kids. You don't actually talk to them about how to be safe. You know, what are the negatives, um, you know, kind of doing that because, um, it's not a problem. We don't have to deal with it. Someone else will teach them and we're just kind of hoping for the best. And then you see, you know, adults act inappropriately on social media, being nasty to one another. And you're like, how did that happen? <laughs> like, well, because we blocked everything forever, right? So like that is probably, you know, partly on kind of our approach to this stuff. But I, I love, I, I appreciate that you, you you went through this with me. Uh, it's an old, it's an, actually an old article that I shared. But um, I know both of you kind of live this because you're not just focused on, I think, this happens in some places and I appreciate that it's not like in your IT department it works well with you. They're focused on um, just the tech side of it 
but the, but as you said earlier, the learning side is the is is where we need to begin from, right? The people side is where we need to begin from. The tech comes after. Mm -hmm. So, so hey, I know that. Hey, can I ask you this weird question? <laughs> How your baby stopped crying? Like what happened? Is that, is that it? Like is there you got something going on, or that's it? Just this out, just a. She's with crying. grandma. She's happy. She's probably getting spoiled. No, uh, okay. I was I was wondering because I'm like, yeah, when when our daughter cries, like we are. I mean, all kids are different. This is she is the best so far. She easiest, is the right. easiest baby we've had. Like she is just uh, chill. She awesome. sleeps pretty well. Like it's like man. It, the, the the good thing is like sometimes that'll happen with uh you know someone's first kid and they're like oh let's have 10 more right, right <laughs> but right, like, right. we know how lucky we are yeah. right like this is wow this is we we kept like pinching ourselves when when she was uh i mean she's still only nine weeks so it, the time will tell you know maybe so she'll far, be so good. <laughs> yeah so far so good nine weeks and i love it hey <laughs> well hey, hey, for everyone listening I, I um i really encourage you to check out um adam and kat's book uh, but also you can see their connection on, um, you can see their links on Twitter, follow them. Do you, do I actually, did you have like a, uh, like a shared Twitter account? Do you have that? I saw it. Cause you, you, where did I see the Ada cat thing? Where did I see this? <laughs> yeah. hashtag. It was a hashtag. We oh, it was a hashtag. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, years ago and it kind of right. You're off. like, you just embraced your Californianess and had like the celebrity <laughs> couple name yeah. and all that stuff. I love yeah. it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, so la last thing I'm going to ask you, okay? So, you know, last, like, so I'm a teacher and I'm interested in this book because I know a lot of teachers listen to this. Like, why would a teacher get this book? So in getting this book, you're going to see a, I would say one of the best things is the quote you said, um, if we plan with the four C's in mind, the tech takes care mm -hmm. of itself. It can be very overwhelming as a teacher to know, oh, I'm expected to integrate technology and I don't really know how, and I don't have a lot of time and how do I plan this? Uh, and does it have to look exactly the same? Because mm -hmm. my classroom looks different than someone else's classroom. So we talk about lesson design where we come up with ideas by literally having like a, a, a four grid, square. a four square and yeah. having the four C's. And we think about how might we use technology and non-tech for yeah. communication, mm -hmm. for creativity. Uh, so it's a great way to think about a solid pedagogical way to integrate tech, but also right. in a way that's not, it doesn't take a whole bunch of extra time. It's not like you have to use Flipgrid or you have to, no, yeah. it's based on that learning. It's based on engaging kids. So it's a very open-ended um, approach that's going to build on your strengths and on what you already know so that you can continue to improve that way in an organic way. Yeah, I, some, I, I got some positive feedback from uh, um, almost finished with a leading a book study on it. Um, hmm. And the, the teachers that I'm working with, um, their big biggest pain point right now is student engagement. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to the part about the four C's and we, we did some practice four C's uh, lesson design uh, on the whiteboard and stuff. And they're like, oh, my God, th th this right here just – ups our engagement tenfold like it's so it's so much easier now than plugging it into a very rigid lesson plan if we and i'm using the tech and sometimes i am sometimes i'm not and they were just like oh they're energized on on ways that they're going to engage their students and it it really alleviated that pain point so if you're 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 looking to alleviate that pain point as a classroom teacher our book definitely uh, can help I love it. I love it. And so I, I know you both well, and I know it's um, it's going to make an impact with a lot of people. I know it's been out for a little while, but it's still resonating with many. So first of all, thank you for taking the time to connect with me. I know that uh, you're both working, have a new baby, and we're spending here. But just throughout the years, I really appreciate you. And I know that um, anyone, if, if you have the opportunity to connect with these two, you're going to, it's just a blessing. So um, thanks for everyone for listening. Uh, Adam and Kat, thanks for thanks for taking the time out of your day to join me. Thank, thank, thank you. We were uh, honored to be on, and thanks oh, for yeah. all the inspiration over the years and continuing. Uh, for sure. Yeah, well, I'll, you know, still want to be your edger hero, right? So I don't want to right. fall through the grace, right? But hey, thanks everyone. And hey, uh, can, last question: uh, Tech Rodeo. Can anyone join now because it's virtual? Yes. Yes. Right. So if you want, just Google Tech Rodeo. I'm sure they'll find yeah. it. If find yeah, it, right? you probably will. Okay. Yeah, um, you can put hashtag Tech Rodeo as well, and yeah. you'll find it. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and cool. when it when is it exactly? It's January fifteenth, 
uh, 15 this Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. of 20. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe, and I don't know when I'm publishing this, but you know, maybe, maybe I'll get to pop in and say hi to everybody. Hey, that would be awesome. So, anyways, thanks everyone for listening. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Adam and Kat, for being on. Thank you.